Good afternoon and welcome back to the Orange Stage at ETL 21. Uh, we've had some amazing sessions today. I've actually been really looking forward to this one since I uh, saw it on the agenda. So we've got some uh, really good things coming up. Um, before I hand over to Rob to, uh, to lead the session, um, I just wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, the best way to uh, hear the session is through the headsets which are on the back of your chair. Um, if at the end of the session, I can just ask you to leave those on the seat of the chair before you leave um, and they'll be cleaned and replaced before they get used for the next session. Um, also, we will be taking questions uh, throughout this and we'll be posing them to, to Rob and to Thomas at the end. Um, we'll be taking those questions using Glissa. Um, the easiest way to access that platform is via the QR code, which is uh, over my left-hand shoulder. Um, and you can also access that via the URL at glsr.live forward slash ETL21. If you are watching online, if I can ask you to click on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little plus button, and you can go in there, and that will uh, bring you to the area to ask questions as we go through as well. Um, so that's all the kind of housekeeping done. Um, we've got an amazing session here um, where, we can, where we're exploring what we can learn from Ant and Deck uh, when planning virtual events. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Rob Woodhead uh, and over to you. Thank you very much, Greg. <coughs> uh, thanks very much, ladies and gents, for, uh, for joining us today. And thank you very much for everyone who's joined us online as well. Um, I don't need to tell um, either anyone watching or uh, live and in person that COVID has well and truly rocked the events industry. Um, we've all had to learn new skills, adapt our businesses, and learn to live with uncertainty for what has nearly been two years now, which is quite frightening. Um, I think what else is fair to say is that as the world begins to regain its composure, virtual audiences are actually slowly emerging as a new normal, and I don't think that's set to change. Um, it's probably going to come as no surprise, I'm sure, to know that Zoom's value rose massively from 2019 to its peak uh, during lockdown. So 15 billion in 2019, um, right the way through to $160 billion um, during its peak in lockdown. That is a massive 970% increase. But I think what's more interesting is the anticipated growth of the virtual events market from 2020 to 2027. Um, if you look again at the stats here, we're talking about a potential rise from 78 billion in 2020 to a massive 404 billion in 2027. So yes, in-person conferences are slowly making their way back to us, but virtual events and virtual audiences are actually here to stay. And I think businesses that understand that and that understand the importance of connecting colleagues to their brand and to each other by a mixture of virtual and live experiences throughout the course of the year are set to reap massive benefits. However, and there is a big however, despite the anticipated growth in this market, over 40% of event planners <coughs> confess to being unable to organize a successful virtual event in 2020 according to event MB research. Anyone want to hazard a guess as to what the biggest roadblock was for them? Any takers? Cost was one, yeah, definitely. Actually, top of the list was engagement. So engagement, 31% of those people interviewed um, cited engagement as their biggest challenge when pivoting to virtual. So you're right, budget was down at 11%, but 31%, which is quite a scary number, really, when you think about the fact that we've not been able to do live for such a long period of time. So for the session today, Tom and I uh, want to explore the challenges of truly engaging a virtual, a global remote audience, sorry, when delivering a virtual or hybrid um, event and draw inspiration from some real life examples um, of some of the best produced TV shows and look at how they've considered uh, and adapted throughout the pandemic. So I'm Rob Woodhead, I'm MD of Simply Better. We are a creative engagement agency with a passion for delivering engaging experiences that drive better results for brands throughout the world. And joining me on stage shortly is Tom, um, founder of Hypothesis Media, and someone who was instrumental in creating the virtual audience for Ant and Deck Saturday Night Takeaway. So we're getting it first hand from Tom. So if pivoting to virtual was a theme of 2020, I think it's fair to say that hybrid has become the new buzzword for, for 2021. Interestingly enough, almost 50% of corporate event attendees consider hybrid events to be their preferred choice um, of format moving forward over a purely virtual or a purely live event, according to Metrigy research. But I think the challenge still remains the same. Organizing a successful event is even greater. Engaging your virtual audience, but also engaging um, a live audience as well. And those experiences have to be two very separate things in order to make it successful. 
We all know how much effort goes into planning uh, the attendee journey for a live event, and that same care and attention has to be given to your virtual or hybrid audience to make sure that they get the most out of your event as well. So in other words, we have to allow our audience to participate and to engage with our events no matter where they are. And these are the two key words, participate and engage. Because engagement, as we know, is the biggest challenge, but it's also key. And it's essentially what separates your virtual event experience from a TED Talk on YouTube. Inspiring, yes, educational, definitely, but interactive and engaging in two-way, definitely not. Now, there are lots of ways to engage people on traditional, uh, sorry, beyond traditional virtual platforms such as Team and Zoom. You've got loads of ex examples with um, people that are exhibiting today. Uh, you've got gamification, you've got live polling, you've got Q&A, some of which we're using today. You've got surveys, chat functionality, one-to-one -one video calls, loads and loads of really useful tools. But the stats around those that were unable to organize a successful virtual event prove that those tools alone, um, whilst they go some way to meet in need, don't actually help um, truly engage your virtual audience. So that begs a question. What is the key element to virtual audience engagement? Well, I believe it's this. I think it's designing your running order with your virtual audience's events in need, or with your virtual audience's needs in mind, should I say. And that sounds obvious, but so few people do it. Um, think about their attention span. People can much more easily tune out when they're at home. They've got so many distractions. They've got kids. They've got washing machines, they've got dogs that need feeding, they've got everything else, and it's dead easy to leave an online event. So session times, the design of the running order, the content variety is absolutely critical, okay? And we need to make, uh, focus on making that experience interactive and allowing people to actually participate and actively participate in the event rather than just passively watching the event. So where on earth do Ant and Deck come into this, I hear you ask? Well, when you sat at home and you're in your pajamas and you're logged on, and you're watching a virtual event, you could argue it's probably more akin to watching a TV show than it is actually attending a live event. So TV producers actually face the same challenges. With so much choice on TV and online, how do they keep their audiences engaged and how do they make sure that their audiences remain tuned in, physically and mentally, for the duration of their show? And what ideas, therefore, can we beg, steal and borrow um, from some of the best TV sh uh, produced TV shows and how they've pivoted online? Now, for the sake of this presentation, as I said, we're going to focus on three key takeaways uh, that I've pulled out from Ant and Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway. And in particular, I want to focus on episode one of their return to ITV in February 2021, uh, when they returned with a virtual audience. Um, that show ranked number one on ITV's weekly rankings and had um, 8.51 million viewers. It was a brilliant example of how to pivot and adapt to restrictions in place around large gatherings. And just as a quick recap for those who aren't avid fans of Ant and Deck, because you haven't got children like me, um, let's just have a quick reminder of how they did it. So obviously things are going to be a little bit different this year on Take. We've got no live studio audience. But we do have this, our virtual wall. We will be live to over 320 living rooms during the show, and they will be Kitchens. watching the show, watching the show live, reacting along. We'll be surprising some of them. They can vote live, we can chat to us with them. Interact with them. It's good, um, it's really good. It's going to be very, very exciting. We are in a satellite takeaway studio. The audience would normally be there, but not this year. Oh no, they're live from home on our virtual wall. Hello. I tell you what, just as well we're not live right now, we are still in rehearsals. And thank goodness, because she's not paying attention. And this beautiful baby's nearly asleep. Unbelievable. Guys, I just walked in the studio. This is phenomenal. Well, it's good, isn't it? But it's, it's not only good, it's like you can see people. Yeah, you see the whites of their eyes. And you can see yeah. whole families as well, which is really good. Even though there's only 320 screens here, you know, there'll be three, four, five people on every sofa. So we could have over a thousand people in the, in the show tomorrow night. It's phenomenal. But what if there's someone up there that I know I can't stand? <laughs> I know it's not my show, no, but no. can I get them We, we off? could turn their, their thing off. Fantastic. Of How are you doing surprises with the audience? Well, ah. we, can, we, can, we can go up to the wall and we can, um, we can highlight somebody and bring them up full screen and we can, we can surprise them at home. Oh, nice. So this is where we control the virtual wall. So if at any point in the show, Anton Deck wants to talk to anyone, we can pick someone out of the crowd. So we show big on the studio floor and Anton Deck can have a conversation with them. 
Can we pull someone up live now? Oh, there we oh, go. There we go. Oh, oh, they've gone. They're there there over that go. side, yeah. And, and they're gone. And they're gone. So that's how we bring somebody else up. There you go. Look. Hello. Hi. 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 It's like after this, do we go back to having a live audience? Because this is incredible. So obviously on Anton Dex, that's just my takeaway. The audience are at the heart of the show. They are the show um, and we can't make an audience without them. And just because they're virtual, it doesn't mean they're any less involved. In fact, they're probably more involved. It's a very interactive experience for them. At any point, Ant Deck or myself can pick one family to enlarge onto the screen. So. Here's a little warning. Be careful what you're doing throughout the entire show. As well as that, uh, during Ant vs Deck, I may be asking you who you think will win this week's challenge. Will it be Ant? Will it be Deck? We will do an entire vote. 52% to 48%. Right, oh. can I just say something? We are not even live, and that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. There's even a new announcer box. I love it. It's going to be, yeah. I think it is, mm -hmm. definitely, yes. television's mm -hmm. most uh -huh. advanced virtual wall system. You're right. He's right, I think. And this is where the boys will start the show. Now, they have asked me to test the stairs for them. What are they like? As though we'd mess about on a live Saturday night TV show. Guys. The stairs are so. So we've seen the wall, and now we can't wait to see your lovely faces on the telly. See you later. What's that? Okay, okay, yeah, you can't get off that way. Bye. So a brilliant example of how um, a really well-produced TV show pivoted during lockdown to enable the audience, which is such an integral part of that show, to become still part of the show, although they weren't there in person. So what can we learn from that? Well, let's remind ourselves of the key challenge about engaging a virtual audience, designing your running order with virtual audiences' needs in mind, and look at how they did it so brilliantly. Now, whether that be engaging uh, the virtual audience that were actually on screen, on the big screen, or just those of us that were sat at home on our sofas. So lesson number one, content is king. Content is king, okay? Anyone want to hazard a guess as to what these two numbers represent in relation to content? Craig, I'm looking at you. You shouted last time. <laughs> yeah, interesting, nearly, yeah. Nearly the length of time people stayed watching, yeah. Actually, what it was, within their 90-minute show, they actually had 27 separate pieces of content in that show. And the average length of that content was 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Not only that, but there was more unseen footage on ITV.com where viewers could log on and view even more. Now, this is how it broke down into the agenda. Tom actually asked me where I got this from. What I did is actually watch the show painstakingly because I'm a bit of a geek and typed it into Excel and dropped it into here. But this is their running order. This is their agenda. And again, this is a 90 minute show. And I think the variation of content is key. I'm not expecting you to be able to read it all, but you've got a mixture of obviously live sessions from the studio, pre-recorded VT, live links out to Fleur East and, uh, and Andy Peters, um, interactivity with the wall. The variety of content was absolutely massive. Now, if you take a physical event or a typical live event agenda and think about how much content you'd ordinarily have in 90 minutes, then it's frightening. You might get an opening video, you might get a welcome, a couple of keynotes, you know, maybe four or five pieces of content. So you cannot just lift and shift a live event agenda and apply it online without failing miserably from an audience engagement perspective. So takeaway take number one, Saturday night takeaway number one, would be consider the amount, the length and the variety of the content to make sure your virtual audience is kept engaged uh, and interested. Okay, number two, give your brain a break, okay? Some of you might have seen this already, but research from Microsoft, uh, Microsoft has showed that stress increases over the course of back-to-back -back virtual meetings. No shit, Sherlock, I hear you say. We've all been party to uh, days worth of Teams calls. So brain activity associated with stress actually increased as the number of consecutive video meetings increased. But they did also um, point out that there was a very easy remedy, which is taking a break in between meetings. So as part of the research, they asked volunteers to participate in two different sessions of meetings. So on day one, they attended four half-hour meetings back-to-back, -back, which is only two hours of content. And again, if we think about some of the 
running orders and the agendas and length of agendas that we actually do for full, full day events online. And then on another day, the four, four half hour meetings were interspersed with 10 minute breaks and participants were all assigned the same downtime activity, which was medication, uh, medication meditation in this case, um, so that the results would be comparable. And the, the findings were really interesting. Um, Again, probably nothing, nothing that doesn't strike you as, oh yeah, okay, like groundbreaking, but you know, think about how this applies. So transitioning between meetings can be a massive source of stress. Back-to-back -back meetings can decrease your ability to focus and engage, and breaks between meetings allow the brain to reset and reduce cumulative buildup of stress across meetings. Now, TV producers know this. Like we said, it's up to them to keep their audience engaged and tuned in for the, for the duration of their show. So how do they design it in? Well, again, if you take a look at the agenda, within 90 minutes, there were five ad breaks um, within Anandex Saturday Night Takeaway. Um, and it's interesting to see the times that they fell. So like we said, at the beginning is probably when engagement is absolutely optimal. Um, so the first break didn't actually come until 25 minutes into the show. But then as people start to struggle and switch off a little bit, the break time decreased after that. So there was 10 minutes before the next break, then eight minutes. And then interestingly enough, it picks back up to, 15, uh, to 16 minutes, almost like a second win for the audience. So again, if you think back to a live agenda and taking that agenda and, take, and, and applying it directly online, how many breaks would we ordinarily have in 90 minutes? Very few, I would say, one at best. Um, so takeaway number two would be, as well as your short, sharp and very content, make sure you're interspersing it with lots of breaks to give the brain a chance to reset and get people to do online, uh, sorry, who are watching online, get them to, uh, allow them to do what they need to do. Uh, and third, but by no means least, the action is in the interaction. Again, if we look at the agenda, we saw from the video how key audience interaction is for Ant and Deck. There were six separate pieces of active interaction throughout the show with their virtual wall. And these included, uh, for those that are familiar with the show, so there was a welcome and an introduction of the virtual audience. Um, there was then actually one-to-one -one interaction where they pulled people up on screen like you saw in the video and, and met them uh, in their, in their, in their uh, living rooms. Um, there was a surprise studio interview with a teacher that was retiring. They had former pupils on, on screen who were interacting with her and wishing them the best. Uh, there's takeaway getaway, brilliant two minutes of the show where um, they drop into people's living rooms uh, and, chat with, uh, and give away prizes, give away free holidays for some amazing stuff that they've done in the community. Uh, there was Ant versus Deck, there was a live audience poll, and then there was win the ads where a lucky member of the virtual audience got the chance to win uh, everything in the ad breaks. So that's absolutely key. And again, I would ask the question, how often did you actively interact with your virtual audience at the last hybrid event that you organized? Yeah, and I'm not just saying sort of passive polls or Q&A, but actually one-to-one -one, um, one -one interaction with people. So takeaway number three would be, how can you actively interact with your audience to ensure they participate in rather than just watch your event? Now, Tom will talk more on this um, in due course, but. Tom talks a lot about lean forward experiences where the audience are actively engaged as opposed to what we call a lean back experience where the audience are passively watching. Um, as we said, um, so much of the show, and this is a quote from, from Deck, so much of the show is about the audience and, um, and the virtual audience was absolutely critical to the success of that uh, and absolutely integral. There were over, over 320 families uh, live on screen each week and over half a million individual virtual audience tickets were sold or requested throughout the series. And that enabled the audience to interact with voting and gameplay uh, and various other one-to-one -one chat with the studio. So to bring a little bit of color to my presentation and some real life examples, um, I'd just like to welcome uh, Tom to join me on stage and just chat through uh, the virtual seat technology in a bit more detail. So welcome, Tom. Thanks, thanks, Tom. Thanks for that nice preface. Uh, oh, it's all right. It's all, right. all that great content. <laughs> um, so, yeah, do you want to give us a little bit of context first about um, your involvement in the show and, yeah, what you guys were responsible for? Yeah, sure. So, uh, Hypothesis Media are basically a live production consultancy, and we do a lot of uh, innovation around technology and content. I personally come from 20 years worth of broadcasting background, some TV experience, and have done a lot of innovation with sort of live events in television with fan centric and audience centric solutions. So we've done things like uh, the first ever global social vote for uh, the Brit Awards. Um, we worked on sort of live interactive gameplay for Million Pound Drop on Channel 4 and obviously uh, Saturday Night Takeaway. So um, we were really well placed to kind of understand how best with the restrictions of lockdown, how to bring a virtual audience into 
uh, a very well-known brand, but do it in a way where the audience still got a very good lean forward experience. What we didn't want was Zoom for television. So working with our production partners um, and technology partners, the famous group in the US who the virtual sick technology uh, is their proprietary software and our delivery parties connect, connect Pixel, we kind of brought all those elements together and delivered it with the live production team. Brilliant. And it was a massive success, obviously. It was, it was fantastic. Um, I think one of the first questions I've got is virtual seat is a technology. So what makes that virtual seat audience on Saturday Night Takeaway more than a solution for just a pandemic? You know, the longevity of it, how do you see it working going forward? Well, I think we approach this very much about what can the solution do post-pandemic. We just didn't want it to be a one-trick pony of like, oh, it's a, a virtual wall of people and they're only there because people can't have live studio audiences. We wanted to really think about it as an experience. So utilising our understanding of how live television works, we wanted from that moment that that audience come into via their digital ticket to seat experience, they speak to a member of the production team, so um, they get to speak to people behind the scenes, welcome them into the experience, what's expected of them as a participant, what, you know, whether they need any props for the show, whether there's going to be any inter interactive questions. So as soon as they interact with a human on the other end of the production team via their laptop at home, instantly their whole sort of feeling about the show was converted. It wasn't like they were at work and on a Zoom call. It was like we're, we're having an entertainment experience and we're seeing things behind the scenes we wouldn't do from, from having that. So I think by bolting in that whole experience side of uh, live production into the virtual seat experience, we've been able to provide this kind of end-to-end -end solution that integrates into live production, sits seamlessly with the live production team because that was a massive concern. Um, that people were worried about how it was going to integrate into live, you know, technically into live television production. Um, so we really considered that first of how we could scale this up once things move, move back now into sort of more hybrid environments as well. Um, so we wanted to really focus on the experience, putting the audience first and making sure that it's something that people wanted to come back and do again and again. I mean, one of the... Um, events that we did in the US with, uh, with the, through, through the famous group was uh, the WWE uh, Thunderdome experience. And yes, that was a fan group, so they're, they're a lot more engaged generally, but 70% of those people that came as part of that experience wanted to come back and repeat it. So by, by knowing those kind of statistics that are coming out from people engaging with that kind of content, we knew we were onto something and we've just really tried to kind of, on each iteration, re-embed that back into the experience from the fans and learn something new to kind of give them something more time and time again. Really interesting, thank you. And I think that, like we said, the experience element is key, certainly coming um, from the corporate side of things, from an agency, working with our clients, that, ex that experience is key to driving engagement. It's got to feel different to business as, business as usual comms, which is delivered via Teams or Zoom. And to touch on your point as well, the experience for, for a live audience has to be different to the experience for a virtual audience as well because their needs are different and, and I think it's designing two separate experiences for one event and I think it's absolutely key. I think you're totally right, Rob. I think we really wanted to make sure that this was something that they go away and talk to their friends and family about. Yeah. One, the, the great thing about Saturday Night Takeaway was that it was a, a family experience for one. Usually digital environments can be quite divisive for families. You know, you, young kids sitting on the couch with their phones, mum and dad on their phones. But this time we use digital to really forge that and bring audiences together for an entertainment format on a Saturday night. So we, we succeeded in that measure and just seeing all the family being booked together, you've got dad bringing in the snacks and you know, mum sort of rearranging the camera to make sure everyone was in shot. It was just to watch it live, it was just a real kind of moment of actually digital can really improve people's experiences from the comfort of their own home. Yeah. And I think by understanding all those key values as to what virtual audiences can do going forward, we were like, right, we're on to a winner here. There's a foundation here that we can really build upon yeah. and bring all those kind of key metrics involved of how people are engaging, what they wanted from it, how they were interacting and really building into that, that into their expectation of what was needed from them as an audience member, I think really helped us kind of grow week on week across the seven week run. Really interesting. I think I've, I've got to confess, like I said, we did beg, steal and borrow and pinch some of the ideas from Saturday Night Takeaway as well. So we have actually applied that to, uh, to a few things, you know, a few approaches to virtual award ceremonies as well, where we get rid of the traditional black tie meal, you know, round table dinner. And it's more about the experience for the family. And we pull the family into that, you know, down in from home and take away right. vouchers yeah. and whatever else. And it, you know, it's worked brilliantly. Um, I'm mindful 
to well, Craig, whether or not there are any uh, any other questions from the audience as well. Um, yeah, if we've got some. Yes, we have. Uh, through Glisser, we've uh, we've secured some uh, some questions. So I'll, I'll pose those to you. They've just popped up over your shoulder. If anyone does want to submit another one whilst we're talking, um, glsr.live forward slash etl21. Um, uh, first of all, that session was amazing. Thank you so much. Really, uh, really engaging. Um, the the top question I think is a, a really interesting one. Um, do you think the next series of uh, Saturday Night Takeaway will have a live audience back? Um, and if so, does that mean that ultimately live is better? I think Saturday Night Takeaway is quite a unique entertainment experience. It is about the audience. Um, but as you saw Ant and Deck comment in their reaction to the technology and what it was doing for their show, we were in you know, Series 17 when that show the series went out. So we were really conscious that it was a brand that needed to be protected. So introducing a new element like a virtual audience was a risk. But their reaction, how the audience reacted to it, um, there's nothing being confirmed for next series. Things are kind of in discussion about whether they want to go the hybrid route, which I think would work really well, yep. by having the virtual audience against the in-studio audience, having sort of editorial elements there that could really work. But we are working on other shows as, as we speak in the entertainment field that are really capitalizing on what we learned from um, Saturday Night Takeaway and what we could do in a hybrid environment with the physical and virtual elements and the content enhancements that we can get from that by having the two sort of different dynamics, bringing them together in virtual votes, different polling mechanics, head to heads, all sorts of different creative content that can come out of that. So to me, that's the more exciting element of what we can do next using different visual technologies, mixed reality. We're talking about introducing this into kind of engine unreal environments as well to sort of build out in the metaverses. So there's lots of different ways that this, we've, we're growing from Saturday Night Takeaway to offer up more content opportunities. I think that's a really good point. I think, I think what it's proved is that it can work with a virtual audience. And Tom and I were chatting um, earlier today and we were just kind of saying, you know, if there's one good thing about the pandemic, it's that it's accelerated this technology at a massive rate of knots. We're probably 10, 20 years ahead of where we might have been. And as long as the demand is there, the stuff is going to keep on evolving. So those experiences are just going to get better and better and better. So I think, I think like you said, the challenge is integrating live and, and, and virtual and creating that hybrid experience, which I think is the same for corporate clients as well. So, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, Rob, kind of looking at your world a little bit in terms of online um, exhibitions, conferences, all that kind of thing. Um, creating, uh, and we've seen from this, that creating content and engaging content is, is, a, is really beneficial. There's so much free content out there in the, in the world and online. How should business or event organizers look to stand out from that and, and separate themselves from what people can just access by searching through YouTube? I think it's a great point. I, I, I think probably one that I, I maybe touched slightly on in there, I think the uh, you know, engagement is the key, and that is essentially what, what differentiates your, 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 your experience, your virtual experience, to, to watching a TED Talk. So there is so much free content out there, and you can go and educate yourself and watch some brilliant and amazing things, but you can't participate too, eh? And we always talk about active learning, and, and how, how can you, even though that person is sat there on their own, how, how can you make sure that they are doing something that is kind of, that is there and tangible uh, that's interacting with what's happening on screen as well. So polling and Q&A does that a little bit, but actually, um, you know, are the things that you can send out to people, are the things that they can take part in, are the things that they can learn where they, where they, like we said, they're participating, not just watching the event. So I think that, I think to integrate, integrate that two-way connectivity is, is, is the difference. Uh, and, and like we said, design it for their needs. So, yeah. yeah. Fascinating, thank you. Um, uh, and the next question, um, and you've just given us uh, an amazing showcase with Anton Deck, and obviously uh, they, they aren't uninspiring hosts, but sometimes you do go to these uh, events online where there's an uninspiring host who's a bit drab or a bit dull, um, and that can really set the tone for, for an event, can't it? So um, in your experience, how do you go about finding the right person to host, um, and how important is it to brief them properly as well? Yeah, critical. Um, I mean, we, we've done a few, uh, various things virtually. Um, we've used internal hosts within the organizations, uh, and the key bit there is briefing and rehearsals because they can walk in and it can be uh, a bit intimidating, so we always make sure there's rehearsals there. But again, like, use the experience of people that are out there. There are people that, that present TV shows. Obviously, you can get celebrity hosts that are more akin to presenting in a virtual environment or, or on TV. That, like I said, that's more akin to a virtual environment. So use them and use their, use their expertise. Um, 
we've worked with a couple, uh, a few people uh, recently. Hugh Edwards was brilliant as a as a, uh, someone to. Um, we were we had presenters down in remotely, but he held almost like a studio panel session where he uh, where he interviewed everyone. But just to calm an influence on on some of the key stakeholders within the business as well. So pick the people that are experienced and uh, make sure they're briefed properly. Amazing, thank you. Uh, the next question. Um, so this is the best innovation I have seen all the way through uh, throughout ETL 2021, um, and this person can imagine what it will do for a sporting event with the fans. Uh, do you want to sample in a collaboration with his events company, Yaya Events in South Africa? If you want to pay for our flights over, we're yeah. more than happy to come over and have a chat, yeah. As long as, as, long as it's business class, I'm all good with that. Perfect. Uh, no, in all serious notes, though, if people want to get in touch with you, uh, what's the best way for them to, to reach out? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, Tom and I are both on, uh, on LinkedIn, so probably, probably LinkedIn. Uh, I can certainly share, um, I don't think my email details are at the end of this, but it's rob at wearesimplybetter.com. Tom, what's your email address? Tom at hypothesismedia.co.uk or I'm on Twitter at Tom Bowers too. Yeah, so please feel free to reach out. If anyone's got any questions or wants to kind of contribute to the discussion, then yeah, I'm more than happy to take it forward. So yeah, thanks very much. Amazing. Business conversations happening live. That's what ETL's done. So uh, yeah, no, uh, that brings us perfectly to the end of our slot. So um, a massive thank you to, to Rob and to Tom for such an engaging uh, piece of content. That's been uh, fascinating. Um, if I can just reiterate, if you've been wearing headsets, if you can just leave them on your uh, seat of your chair before you leave so we can get them clean. Um, and all that reminds is to wish you the very best for the, uh, the last bits of uh, ETL 2021. Thank you for being here on the Rob stage with Rob and Tom. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.